I'm having a blast not do, doing what I want to do and right. choosing as opposed to, you know, you can get blind, like, going through, like, strips. All right, like, here, this audition, and that, it just becomes so, after a while, and I think it's part of it. I think you have to do it. I've just been doing it for 40 years. I mean, I've been in... in March, it'll be 40 years that I'm in this business. For oh wow! So, like I said, just I by you just by nature you you develop other interests. Yeah. You know? Welcome to the Wolf's Den, where nothing is off limits here. Kevin's a good friend of mine. I wanted to come on here because. Uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I have to, I have to admit it. So like, I'm like, I'm a fan. But here's the thing, all right? There's something every once in a while. And Doug Allen, the, the director, creator, is a great, good friend of mine as well. He's the man. We, we met through Doug, I think, all right? And, um, and sometimes something just comes together. Right. And it's fucking right. Yeah. And that's what Entourage was, right? Well, there's also a little timing involved, which, which brings me to my story that I always tell about you. you we, I remember we were shooting season seven out in Encino. And, uh, you know, it's funny because Entourage, at a certain point, it became like doing live television. <laughs> like, the, there would be rows and rows of, like, people visiting, you know. Like, I was never a fan of it because it was always a little distracting for me. But yeah. Doug, you know, Doug's a big, you know. So Doug, Doug's got a lot of friends, right? So there's always Doug's. people in and out, you know. So I remember one day, I'm sitting there, and you were sitting behind me in the monitor. And Doug and I were looking at something, and you were like, yo, Connolly. <laughs> and I look back, and you're like, Leo gonna do my movie or what? <laughs> now, I'm like, uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. And the reason why I say that is because just the odds- It's such a long shot. It, it doesn't matter how good your script is. It doesn't matter the odds of like lining up Leo and the timing, right? The script is being right. Leo, Scorsese. Scorsese and then the financing that those two guys need to do a movie. It's not, it's just a long shot regardless. It really is. So, I want, but it's funny. Cause that was the first thing I thought about when like Leo's like, yeah, I'm going, we're going to do this movie. I'm like, R I said, Doug, was that? Was like, oh yeah, that, that was him. He basically tried to shoot down his dream job. You told him no. And here he goes, you know, and it's you know, like, you know what happened with that is that Leo, it was his passion project. Right. And see, he was so certain he was going to get it done. Like, he, just, he, was oh, like, he was hell bent. Cause I promise you I'm going to get this done. The big holdup was always Marty cause Marty moves slower. Right, it's a big well, difference, but you that's know? why he's Marty because right. he takes his fuck time. And it's like it's like well, it's like he's like Paulie from Goodfellas, right? He, he don't move for nobody. And also <laughs> too, and when it's ready to go, it's ready to go, and they don't they don't rush to get shit done, and until it's right, and you know, but um, yeah, it's, it's just incredible, and and I do remember, uh, you know, that's the most involved that Leo's been, oh. to my knowledge, in in terms of like Dude, the production and like forget he was pulling favors to like clubs and whatever it was you know, he really rolled his sleeves up so that really was a passion project of his and um so how do you know leo brother? how that's how'd you meet he, he and i grew up together i mean he's like one of the first people i met in la 92 91 <laughs> 92 so yeah we kind of we kind of grew up together i mean he was just coming off of growing pains at the time and he got that movie with de niro this boy's life right, right. and that was like you know I mean, obviously it was a huge thing but to to, to know that where he was going to go from there obviously it was who could have so you part of the early pack with leo and toby mcguire that yeah, was toby's toby's my brother toby is the guy that you know like i owe my life in los angeles to toby i moved out here i didn't know anybody and uh toby and i worked on a tv show called great scott right and uh, Toby was the first one to be like, yeah, this guy is here. Like, he doesn't have any, hey, why don't you come to a party with me and my buddy? So Toby really kind of brought me around. And uh, yeah, man, he's my brother. So what made you move? You originally from where? From the, Long Island. From Long, yep. Which part? I grew up out in Patchogue, Long Island. Oh, you're fucking really Oh, old. yeah. Like, yeah. 63 well, now or something? It's, oh, 64, yeah. 64. And now, Patchogue. Forum. Right, exactly. You when, when I was growing up, like, you, you didn't, <laughs> when it was dark, you would stay off that main street. And now it's, Patchogue is like the summer hotspot. Right. It's strange, but it's huge, yeah. I mean, the island is just spreading out, you know? So so when did you move first move out from, from Patchogue? 92. So you came out here and just, just said, fuck it, I'm going to be an actor? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was a child actor. Right. So, like, I've been acting my whole life. Right. Um, but, but you're really going to... And I was I was a horrible student. I just wasn't... It's not even that I, I couldn't have been a good student. I, I just... I don't know, man. I just made up my mind pretty early on that I was coming out here. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, listen... <laughs> Well, whatever the saying is, if I knew then what I knew now, I'm glad I didn't know it because if I, right. I wouldn't recommend it. Like, right. you know, I would tell anybody, go to college. Yeah. You'll still be 22, 20, you have plenty of time, but you'll always have 
something the else. It's social. It's a good, to me, like college is a great social experience. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish I would have learned more in college. I, I kind of didn't study as hard as I could have. Right. I would guess not. Yeah, I would guess you were out having a good time. That was my guess. I did. Yeah, I had a great time. But, but it still was great, though, just to go for the, you know, the first time on my own. Really, right. You know? I will admit I missed, like, a... Uh, dorm you know i would like the dorm room experience maybe you know that that whole there's parts of it but also we did you know we did something out here like me and the guys like you know we lived in like a like a flop house in the valley like just a bunch of out of work actors like basically living together and like smoking weed together all day long was ridiculous and you look when you look back at though with those good times though of course right weren't they yeah you know in hindsight you know which is what we're talking about hindsight is always twenty twenty yeah it's fantastic I wouldn't trade a day um, I just don't know how I don't know like I said I don't know if I were I'm gonna have kids one of these days and I don't know that I would recommend it I would probably push them to maybe educate themselves a tiny <laughs> bit more than I chose so, to educate myself. So tell me, okay, so I'm such a huge fan of Entourage, right? I've seen every, all right, I admit, I've seen every episode four times at least. At it's least, easy to, it's it's easy to watch. watch. It's like right? comfort food. What do you think it is about it that makes it, like, do you guys, I'm sure you guys have talked about it, what makes it, I know all the celebrities, it, see, it didn't, it became something over time where right. like, everybody just wanted to be involved in it, right. you know, all these great cameos and stuff, right? But um, well, in the first season, we couldn't get. Cash. Right, so I'm saying, so like, what we, was we it? were literally like pulling favors. Like Mark Wahlberg was like pull. Like also, too, people want to know. People just want to see what it is, right? So wait, 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 wait. It's about a what? And it's about a guy. And are, are you guys making fun of me? So the first season was dicey. So it was really like, how can we pull a favor to get this guy or to get this gal? And then by season two, they were lined up. To do it, you know, everybody wanted to do it because people, it's almost a proof of concept. People want to see what right. the show is before right. they do it, you know. All right, guys, next sponsor here. We love this company. They help pay the bills here, right? And they're great. It's Christmas time, so we say it's like jingle bells. Well, how about some jingle balls? This is your manscaping your balls to make sure they're nice and clean and shaven and the pubes are just in perfect shape. Listen, the last thing you want, guys, whether you're single or married, you don't want some girl going down to the enchanted forest, coming up with hair. I, I can't even tell. This is too gross, dude. All right, let's not even talk about that. Let's just talk about the fact that this stuff is awesome. They have all different products for taking care of your genitalia, okay? You get perfect stuff with no abrasion, no scraping, no scarring. They got lotions, potions, shaving stuff. I'm telling you, I use their products. They are freaking awesome, all right? And I got to tell you, want to protect the family juice, the so-called franks and beans, all right? Manscaped.com. If you're not manscaping, you are setting yourself up for some serious, tough times ahead in the bedroom. By the way, I would think also not to say that size matters, but why cover shit up? Because it just makes it look smaller, probably. I, I would think. I don't have that problem. I'm just saying. Who knows? Anyway, it's a great company. You want to check this out. Let me give you the exact details here. Here, Go to manscaped.com, enter the promo code WOLF. You're getting 20% off because this company loves me because of my reads, right? And also because I use their products. 20% off free shipping, manscaped.com. Protect the balls, protect the jewels, the franks, it means whatever you want to say, right? This is awesome stuff. You need this now. All right, guys, here we are with my favorite sponsor. At least one of my favorite sponsors, top three. We've got Oracle NetSuite. Listen, guys, if you're in business for yourself or you're a CFO, COO, you know that if you're not on top of your numbers, they are on top of you, crushingly putting you out of business. Here's the deal. The problem with all these different software programs out there right now they don't really speak to each other that well. They don't integrate. It's expensive. It's cumbersome. It's a pain in the ass to try to keep track of. Just imagine what it would be like if you had one solution for your entire business. Everything, receivables, payables, integrated with your, with your CRM system. I mean, imagine a system like that built by the top company in the world. Well, that's what Oracle NetSuite's done. This program will cover every aspect of your business financial needs, integrate into one perfect system, Everything speaks to each other perfectly, right? All works top line. I'm telling you, just trust me in this. If you use this program, you will see that the days of having six different programs from six different vendors that you have to then integrate, that barely work, you'll say, how did I ever run my business without this? Check it out. And also right now, remember, this is Larry Ellison, one of the richest men in the world, and the coolest guy also, right? His company, this is Oracle. 
It's not a fly by night company. You got to check this out. At least go to the website, check it out. And here's the enter promo code WOLF. They give you a guide, seven key strategies to explode your profits. Okay. It is netsuite.com. And then you put slash wolf, netsuite.com slash wolf. You download your free guide, seven key strategies to grow your profits. Check this out. It is well worth it, I promise you. So was there like any pivotal moment where you guys said, fuck, we've arrived. Like we just, we, something happened. It was an episode just. Well, or- yeah, there were different degrees of it, but I can remember, you know, cause when we would shoot in restaurants, right? Wherever they were. And so I'd say, you know, most restaurants open at whatever, 11 o'clock or so we would have to be in and out of there and shoot the scene before they were open. So right. a lot of times we'd be standing out on Sunset Boulevard at a restaurant, block the scene in the dark. Right. And then like the minute the sun came up, bring in the background and we would, would shoot, be shooting these scenes at six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. And I can remember it was in season one towards the end of, uh, no, no, it was early season two. And uh, Doug walked us, the four of us down the street and took, he said, guys, come take a welcome. And he walked us down the street and he basically said like, look, we got the call from HBO and like, we're going to, they're going to go the distance on it. You know, they're going to, Cause you know, on a TV show, it's like you picked up for eight and then you're waiting to hear about your season two pickup. And then it's like, yeah, we got season two. And then at a certain point they were like, Hey, we're going to, you know, we knew we were going to do. I hung up the phone and called my business manager. I "I want to buy that house. (laughs) He said, (laughs) he said to me, Kevin, if this show gets canceled, this will be the quickest stay you've ever had in a house in your entire fucking life. I was like, all right, deal. You know? So yeah, that was, uh, but there were different degrees of it. I mean, for me, the show aired on a Sunday night. It's like. In 15 eight, years ago, o'clock was it? Uh, July 21st, you know, whatever, 2004. And I, quite literally, my life was different the next day. Oh, like, yeah. I just saw I'm just, like little things. I just like walked into 7 Eleven to get like whatever it was, like, my Gatorade. And, and then I could just feel sort of the eyeballs. Yeah. I was like, wow, that happened kind of, it just happened. That part of it happened pretty quick. So. Yeah, yeah. So what was, was there, um, was this, how much of it was like, Accurate to like, I mean, it would. It became. I think, like, said, over time, everything always becomes a cliche of itself, right? right? But well, it has to be. It, right. People come to expect it, right? Right. Exactly. So, was but how much of that stuff was like real life, sort of Hollywood versus just? I know it was a little bit top of it. How much was real, like in terms of like Ari Gold character, like that? I think a lot of it starts based on one thing, and then becomes another. Like I think in the, in the beginning, because people, you know, like Adrian Grenier is like. It's like Mark Wahlberg, but obviously Adrian Grenier is a different type right. than Mark Wahlberg. Right. Mark Wahlberg's like, you know, yeah. Mark Wahlberg and his friends used to walk into the bar and beat everybody up. <laughs> Dude, we that were, guy's a fucking businessman. Uh, oh, he's a genius. You know, shit, Mark man. Wahlberg, I met, I Mark an Wahlberg is a spoke, genius. Spoke at the same he's a, yes, he's a genius. We spoke at that event together yeah. and he's fucking smart as shit. I'm I like, also, too, I love about Mark. He's like so confident. Like, Mark doesn't get dressed up, right? So it's like, we'll all be somewhere at an, at an event, like all buttoned up in our suits and ties and like Wahlberg like walks in in his t-shirt and jeans and his hat on. I'm like, you know, Mark Wahlberg, only guy who comes in to do his guest stars and he's like, no, 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 I don't need makeup. Let's just go. Let's roll. It's funny. Mark's the best. Yeah, he's no, he's, yeah, was amazing. So, so, so they take on a life of its own. I think yeah. it starts with something and then it just kind of evolves. And when you say about, um, and uh, maybe cliche is not the, the right word, but what happens is anytime we ever tried to stray off the path, people... Got, hated it, right? So New it's example. like, oh, these guys, everything is so great for these guys all the time. They never have any problems, right? So in season seven, Vince right. catches the drug problem and there's the Sasha Gray thing, which is like loosely based on a couple of guys. And then everybody went nuts about that. My life is hard enough. I don't need to be depressed on Sunday night. I need that show to... So it's like, you really couldn't... You, you never make everybody happy, you know? So I remember that, like when I saw that scene, I'm like, damn, that's... That's a very wolf like thing with the big giant bag of coke and the- right, right. I believe that that might have been the day you were on set when Sasha Gray was around. I don't want to pin you to anything, but I'm pretty sure that's what that was. It actually was the season, but it's counting. And so when when you first started, were you guys did you guys get along as a as a crew? Was there any dissension there? Yeah, no, I mean we always we always got along, and it's funny too because people talk about chemistry. We never knew each other before the show. Chemistry develops. Right. And, and that's part of catching the lightning in a bottle. That's part of what happened. It was just like, we all kind of became this thing and that, that was real. And, I, and I've been on shows and I've, I've seen people try to fake it, but for us, it, it was always real. And, and 
to take it even a step further, you know, Jeremy Piven is, you know, he's a complex cat. World class actor. I mean, great actor. I mean, listen, tough, tough guy, right? And you three, all- three Emmys in a row. I mean, I think Don Rickles and Jeremy Piven, uh, literally, probably the only two to ever do it. Something, cra- something crazy like that. So right. Piven's a world class actor, but he really never, ever, really wanted anything to do with us, and it kind of worked. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting because it came across like you and him were just. I mean, on we screen, we, on screen, on right, screen, right. though. We always got along, but like, for example, like uh, before an award show, like the Emmys, like none of us were like super kind of like carpet glory hounds. Nobody ever wanted to. So the four of us would meet at a bar, like, and have a drink. Right. And then we'd walk the red carpet together to kind of carry each other through it, you know? And right. Jeremy was all like on his own. And it's like, wow, it really was sort of like the show in the sense of it was us. And it was him, but it was, it was fine. He just, yeah, he's a complex cat, but you know, he's, a, he's also a serious actor. So it's like a whole, that's a whole nother episode. The weird thing though, is that you're kind of like E in some, in some way though, I view you, like I know you as individual outside. Right. You're a businessman. Right. Like right. you're actually, no. Right. Like, how no, much no, of it's, it's, like, did it beca- it's almost like I feel like in some way you became the character. It's weird. Like, you, well, it's no, I, I think it, you know I mean? it was more the other way. Like, I think when Doug was casting the show, and he'll tell you this, um, Doug and I, ironically, because Doug and I are both big New York Islander fans. Right. Doug is, we're both from Long Island. And people kept saying to Doug, dude, dude I, we got your guy. This is your guy. This is, this is Connolly. Connolly is this guy. And Doug was like, ah. So I think Doug was hearing that, that I was that guy already, you know? So I don't think that I became the character. I think I sort of was that. And then, and then that happened. But I mean, I don't know. I like to think I'm a little harder around the, a little tougher around the edges than, uh, Pretty fucking. He's feisty. Yeah, he, was pretty he, was feisty. feisty. he was pretty feisty. He was pretty feisty. Yeah, he's That's fucking no. Yeah. He's no nonsense. And what up? And so now, when when so every like every TV season has has it has its run. Right, right. So when it ended for you, like, did you you, you probably you knew what a year in advance or tell how long? Yeah, we knew we knew a year in advance. And listen, I mean, look, yeah, we do. We did eight seasons and a movie over the course of ten years. Right. I mean, which is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, you know, like what else could you want out of something? I mean, like that that is an upper deck. <laughs> moonshot at Yankee Stadium. Like, it doesn't get right. any bigger. And at a certain point, all right, and if it would have went on for another year, it would have just been another year. I mean, like, eventually, it, it, it ends, you know? So I always knew that. For me, it was just different opportunities. And you, have, you always develop different interests, right? And it's like, that's the other thing, too. I've been acting my entire life. I just have developed other interests as I've gotten a little bit older. And, like what? What's, what? Well, I mean, like, even, uh, like, I've heard you say, you know, I, I I notice like people come up to you and they want like, they want quick sound bites, right? Like, right. hey, how can I succeed, yeah. right? And you're, I've heard you say more than one occasion, be your own boss, right? And I, that's kind of how I've always sort of felt. Like I always wanted to kind of start and just do my own thing from scratch, from top to bottom, and I want to be my own boss because, unfortunately. You know, actors, it may appear that actors, and they do, they do get treated great. And then there's, there's like the Leos and the Brads of the world. But like a lot of times actors, for the most part, myself included, are on the bottom of the food chain. I mean, you get paid, but you don't have any ownership. There's no... I get it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I just I just want a bigger piece of the fucking It's a little bit of piece, piece of famine with, with an actor, right? In the totally. Sense that, you know, it's like you could be... You have your you have your run, and then it's always like you're almost as good as what's your last role. Totally, right? and, and also too, like you can always bounce around. I'll do eight episodes on this show, and, and until you wait till your next entourage, if ever. So you right. can always work as an actor, but like, I don't want to just work as an actor. Right, I want to be my own boss. All right, next sponsor here, another great one, Stamps dot com. Here's the deal. Listen, I love my postman. He's the best, this guy. Right? He's a great guy, right? He comes to me. I'd rather, honestly, almost commit Harry Carey than wait in line at the post office. Listen, love the postal service. I'm not saying anything bad about them, but we're not talking about the people with the most alacrity. They're not really moving that fast at the post office because they work by the hour, right? It's, uh, uh, it's such a pain in the butt. Well, now, guess what? is a better alternative, and that is Stamps.com. You have the post office now brought to your office. Your computer, your tablet turns into its own post office. You get massive discounts on stamps, on prices. It's just awesome stuff. Check it out, Stamps.com. If you're a business owner, large or small, even an individual, you have to check out Stamps.com. Listen, you know, time is money. 
right? The amount of time that you save by not having to go to the post office, you can't even calculate how much this is worth to you as a business owner or someone that's really trying to make more money for the business you work at or even an individual. And here's the deal. Oh, it's a four week free trial. Plus it is free postage. Free postage at a digital scale without any long term commitment. How is that possible? They're doing it. You got to check it out. All right. So again, go to stamps.com. You click on the microphone at the top and you enter Wolf in there. That's a four week free trial, free postage, a free scale, man. What could be better than that? All right. For your business, check it out now. All right. Our next sponsor here, Vincero Men's Watches. Listen, this company, look, oh, let's say a picture says a thousand words or speaks a thousand words. Just check this out. This watch reeks of wealth. It's heavy. It looks beautiful. Feels great on my wrist. You know, I've had every expensive watch in the world. I paid, I think, $78,000 for one watch. I'm wearing this watch right now. People see me with this watch on. They think it's got to be what? 15,000, 20 grand. Guess how much money this watch cost? It's a couple of hundred dollars at most. How crazy is that? This company's cracked the code, Vincero, on ultra high quality men's watches. Timing, perfect. Nowadays, you know, all watches keep great time. So forget even that. The perfect time looks great, feels great. They have every style you can imagine. This company is absolutely awesome. You got to just do this. Just buy one. To, um, it's like, I think there's those $140, plus you get a discount, VinceroWatches.com. All right, so here's the deal. Just go to VinceroWatches.com slash wolf. All I'm asking you to do is this. Just check out one watch. Don't buy five of them to start. You're going to want to buy five. Just start, buy one. It's their biggest sale of the year right now. You know how much this company always discounts for my listeners? Well, now you've got the Christmas special going on. Just head over to the website, check it out, and believe me, you will be glad you did. VinceraWatches.com, sale of the year, slash wolf, you can't go wrong. This is beautiful stuff. How much, you know, to me, I mean, the, the industry has changed so much. Dude. It's over. It's like <laughs> I mean, not even the same industry. It's crazy. Anymore, right? It's crazy. Tell me, what's your perspective on the whole thing? I mean, you've seen it. You were in the middle of the, you were like, actually, Entourage was like in the middle of the whole thing. It started, it was one way and it ended yep. and TV was a different thing, right? It's crazy. It's changed so much that it's like, but, but also too, like it comes back around. And if you do it long enough, I, I can remember when the reality TV boom hit, right? So you got, let's call it, I don't know, The Bachelor. So it's a two hour show on Monday night. Two hour, <laughs> two hours on Tuesday night. Yeah. Right? So now you got four hours of primetime programming, right? Figure that's, if the half hour shows, that's eight TV shows, right? And at a minimum of uh, seven series regulars, that's 56 actors out of a job, out of a, out of a series regular job on one network on two nights. So you, you get those numbers, right? So that, that's all. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, man, how are we going to, and also to understanding you don't have to deal with any bullshit. It's cheap. Right. And the ratings are through the roof and that they're selling advertising, right? Which is yeah. what it is. So that was a scare for me. I was like, man, what, how, how, how the fuck is this going to, how are we going to survive this as actors? And then Netflix comes along right? and then Amazon comes along and it's like, boom, now, it's you know, right. now it's like blowing up. Now it's the wild west again. And to me, this is the most exciting it's been, only because it's just one way for so long. And now, also the quality is like, I think TV is almost better than movies these days. Or like, it's, or it's certainly a better, it's a better gig because you just, you, you have more of the control, right? The creative control. Like if, if you look at, you know, a studio like Warner Brothers, and I don't know these numbers, exactly what these numbers are, but you know, you, they used to release whatever, 40 big movies. And now it's 12 yeah. or 10. You know, that's, that's, that's a big deal. So it's, it's almost like TV is the new independent film. You can go to a writer, director, actor and go, right. look, what do you want to do? Well, I got this idea. Great. Here you go. Go do it. And, and, and be, you, it, there's a certain amount of freedom to it, which I think people are kind of eating up. I mean, have you seen the, the Jen Aniston, Reese Witherspoon show, the morning show no, on Apple? Oh, it's, 
It's fucking awesome. Is it uh, really? Uh, it's fucking. I watched like so they just I Carell, watched. Um, I mean, it's. I, I saw him the one C. I think it's a sight or C. What's a with um? There's one with the guy. Oh, played. the uh, Jason Mimosa. Yeah, yeah which, I mean, what's that called? Apple, it's it's called C. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I watched that. I watched for, uh, uh one with the the moon the first. I think first. Dude, watch the morning show. Really, it's fucking great. Jennifer Aniston. I love Jennifer. And, and Reese Witherspoon on, uh, up on another level. And Carell's always a beast, but the but the ladies are are killing it in this. Really, movie. I love it. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, it's like a morning show. I, and again, I don't want to, whatever. I, I feel like it might, may or may not be based ish on the Matt Lauer kind of. It's like the morning show politics of like, you know, uh, politics behind a morning show, but it's, it's amazing. What are you, speaking of that whole thing, you've seen, you know, the disaster in Hollywood here with the Me Too stuff. What are you, you know, what's your thoughts on that whole thing? Well, I mean, I think kind of, kind of what, what, what you sort of said. I mean, like, uh, you know, I think. I think the conversation had to be had, 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 had to happen, happen, but always conversation that had goes to too far and stuff. Yeah, or or you know, like at, at, and and I've had heard people say that look, it's just collateral damage, right? right? And you know, for some people that might have gotten caught up in it justly or unjustly, and uh, well, nobody likes collateral dam, right? Collateral damage is, is, a, is a, until it happens to you, you know, or you or someone that you know. I don't know. Collateral damage is tough, so you know, I, I feel like you know it had to happen. It happened. You know, think about it. That was already a couple of years ago, right? I think it's, you know, people are kind of loosening up a little bit. And, I, yeah, and I think it's definitely got a little moving It got forward. crazy for a while. Yeah. I had some friends that got hit really, really bad. Yeah. You yeah. know? And some some deserved it, some not. Right. You know, right. and that's, well, that's the part the that's the sad the sad thing. Cause it, but it, I think you're right. It had to, things had to change. You wonder what, you wonder how history sees this in 20, you know, in 20 years. Like, there'll be, I, I, I always tell people, like, listen, man, you at, even like actresses, actors, I'm like, listen, you're, you're might not feel it cause you're here, yeah. but like one day you'll look back and you'll tell your kids, Oh, I was there. I was, you, you know, know in the middle of it. M my thing is that the, 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 the ones that bother me are the, just me personally. And I, I, I could probably say things you can't say because you, I don't know. You're a pretty outspoken guy though, but <laughs> I fucking tell you that. You never to miss words. <laughs> but my big issue is I think the biggest victims of all were the women, women that would not, play the game that had tremendous talent and didn't get a role. That right. to me is the real victim. Not like the woman that says, yeah, I sold my soul to get to the top. I don't think she's really a victim. She played the game. It's the one that wouldn't do it. Didn't get the part. That was the real to me. That's my opinion. You know? Well, to me, the, the, the surprising thing wasn't, I guess, which is the good thing about the conversation is that, and I'm, I'm a good guy. And I, you know, you know, I think anybody that knows me would tell you that I just didn't see it. You know what I mean? Uh, it was like happening like under uh, under not under my nose, but it was happening I, I around us. Really was someone like it was more. I think more agents, right? Was it really actors? Yeah, doing I just, so much some of the sense. stories that you heard, you're like, what? I know, really? Come on, right? Did it, yeah, did it, honestly, it didn't make sense. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, right? I, it's like it's crazy that I was uh, unaware. So I guess uh, from that perspective maybe you know that the conversation was launched because i honestly didn't really see some of these things that you hear you're like man you know and and, and as 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 a man it's not something that you have to deal with you know right. so i don't know it'll be it'll I be interesting to live myself. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding but maybe a little bit you know <laughs> so what do you think now for in terms of your career now right so you're a businessman now right you have a restaurant very successful. What, tell me your restaurant first. Well, Goal Sports Cafe is a, right. a sports bar. It's on uh, it's on Third here in West Hollywood, and and uh, yeah, man, it's like uh, come on, like who, what, what guy like growing up doesn't dream about owning a, a, sports. a sports bar? Why not? You know what I mean? It turned it into an Islander bar, so we get Islander crowds in there, and uh, it's been a fun clubhouse. You know what I mean? Me and my buddies get together where we hang out there, and it's right down the street from. From my office that I'm right. building, uh, you know, it's just kind of something like this, and it's you know. Yeah, I want to uh, talk about that. Okay, next. yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm having a blast not doing doing what I want to do and right. choosing as opposed to, you know, you can get blind like going through like strips. All right, like here this audition and that audition, it just becomes so after a while, and I think it's part of it. I think you have to do it. I've just been doing it for forty years. Right. I mean, I've been in in March. It'll be forty years that I'm in this business. Four oh wow! So, like I said, just I by you just by nature you you develop other interests. Yeah, you know? what what would be your dream role for you? Like, if you had to do like what's your like not, not your last? Well, here's the thing. Well, it's a different thing. It's a dream role, like the dream gig like right at this now. Point now, and you're. Looking I would role. love to do like what Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon are saying, which is doing, which is like, hey, we got a show idea. Here's the show. 
and just be like heavily involved in a behind the scenes of a of a TV show. Here's here's the. You problem. know, we're making the Wolf of Wall Street into a TV I, series. Amazing. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That one, I'll, love that, to one I'll, I'll, that one, I'll I'll yeah, I love to have you involved in. By the way, I'll do whatever you know. Terry uh, Winter's going to be Terry the show. Winter, is, that, is he going to show run it? Wow, oh yes, he, he's everything. He's, show runner, he is writer. something. He's something else, man. Yeah, he's a good. He's, he's a amazing. Fucking hell of a writer. Yeah, he really um, is. You know, he wrote the script in like fucking like two weeks or something. Did he though? Yes, he did. I he did. I met. Okay, so what happened was I met Terry. Or he let you read it. No, 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 I'm telling. So out of the printer, you're saying like, dude, typed it out of the printer, and all you guys signed on. Everybody agreed. He, that, started, that would be. I'm telling you, he wrote that script in no more than 17 days. Well, also too, I mean, if he's a TV well, writer because he had to learn. Yeah, to but write I'm that. saying if you really are feeling it, which clearly he was, because the script was fucking awesome. You're just rolling. Right? He had the book, and he he somehow his brilliance was he took the book, and like mathematically. Like, Inserted it into a script, right? Was, Which well, is not always easy to well, do. When I read it, like, holy shit, he captured my voice like right. perfectly, and right. it was like it was really amazing. And and I remember reading this, I'm like, I'm like, I can't. I'm like, I mean, it read like a book almost. Right. It was that good, you right. know. And then what happened was everyone loved it. We everyone signed off on it, and then the writers strike hit. And we yeah. got caught up in that whole thing, and Leah went off with the mind to Shutter Island, and then it got delayed and stuff like oh, that. So that yeah, but you know, like those are the kinds of weird things that might have saved the movie. I'll tell you what, it made it a, a thousand times better because what happened was is in that period I rebuilt my life, became successful, they changed the ending of the movie. Changed the movie, movie. and that's, the, that's your movie. My career, right. exactly. So thank and God. And that might have been also the difference between them doing the movie and not. I know Leo's a big redemption guy for yeah. his characters. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. At times you're like, I can't believe this, but that was probably... A lucky bounce, which at the time didn't feel like it was. Didn't feel so no, lucky. Sure. Time. So for you, be like uh, your own, like where you're basically producing, executive. Yeah. And, and by the way. And acting, right? I'm not saying I have to do everything. You know what I mean? I just like to be in the conversations a little bit earlier. Right. If that makes any sense. No, no, yeah, sure. Because it's true. Actors, it's like, you know, which also too isn't a bad gig. And I know a lot of people that love that. Here's your lines. That's your mark. Right. Come, go, go home. Come, go home. Be a pro. Right, kill the scene, and then go home and see if you can get around a golf in. You know, like that's cool too. You know, and maybe down the road, you know, that's what I want to do. Right now, I just, I'm just hungry to get in business and like make that big money. Let's talk about the podcasts. Right, you started. So I have to say, uh, I, you started a podcast. How long? Not your own, but you a company. Pod. Yeah. So tell me about that. Well, yeah. So I started a, I started a, a podcast network company. It's called Action Park Media. And what I'm doing is bringing a bunch Act of podcasts. Well, Remember? that's that's sort of what, it, what <laughs> no, that's what sort of gave me the idea. Was, around it? No, no, like, like, oh, man, a bunch of people got killed. It was a terrible, I know. terrible theme park. Exit seven on the yeah. I mean, I, it was Jersey fun State. to go, but you'd come home with a black eye, and it's like it's funny I because um, I, I was reading an article, and I think six people died. And strangely, like the wave pool, the wave pool, was like, well, the wave pool was very dangerous. I mean, now a hand job in that wave pool. Nice, it was nice. Fucking best moment. Glad I, I'm glad I could take go for a swim. Yeah. Nice. No, I don't think I released uh, fully. Well, but, thank but you very that, yeah, much. I'm a respectful. It's very guy, kind dude. of you. But I just remember my one of my highlights. You of didn't my young, release in the wave pool. I, I did it, but one of my highlights of my young life was that fucking hand job. Hand job in the wave pool. Yeah, yeah especially and big it was, waves. It was my friend's <laughs> younger sister, so I was like nice. The most ethical. I'm sure, he loved that as well. I sure <laughs> loved that as well. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she knows no, who it is. She's probably watching right now. Um. So yeah, no, the action park thing was just like a. I don't know. It just I thought it had a good ring to it, and I didn't think it puts because it's not just sports. It's, it's sports entertainment. Right. I'm a big true crime guy. So um, it's really just was sort of like some a name that popped into my head. I went with it. Right. Um, and it's been more work, I will admit, more work than always is. I would have anticipated. But I guess if it were easy, right? Everybody would the whole be doing world would it. do it. Yeah. Although kind of the whole world is trying. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too. P people like, I don't personally have a podcast. I'm just trying to bring a, a, a nice slate of podcasts sure. together. Yeah. And then you know, I'm learning about selling the advertising. And it's just, it's just fun to learn new things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so the guy who is really doing great is Bob Mennery. Bob Mennery. Yeah. And I love, I love Bob. I'm a fan of Bob. I was right. on his podcast. Yes. And it did really, really. Yes, it did. It was, top yes, it, did. it was huge. It he was, was huge. on mine. He was hysterical. Right. He was a great guy. So how did that happen? How did you start with Bob? Well, it was like a long, by the way, now it seems like you're a fucking genius. Right. Right. But I didn't know. Everyone thought you were out of your mind. Yeah. No, it was just, it was like, well, uh, you know, well, I don't understand. This is going to be, this guy's going to be your opener. Like, are you sure that makes sense? And I was like, I, I, I just do. I don't know why. I just had to, I had to I met so him. Talented, it's funny. I met him at goal, <laughs> which is the funny part. Really? Yeah, I met him at the at the sports bar. He was there having a drink with his girlfriend, and he was like, "Hey, you know, I'll, uh, 
a fan of the show. We kind of were kind of chatting. He was like, what's going on? I was telling him about the studio. Cause at that point I was, had started building out uh, right. action park media. And, uh, I was like, hey, man, you should do a podcast. And he was like, yeah, I'm, you know, working on a couple stuff. And so after a long, it's funny, too, because Bob's a smart business guy. So it was like nailing him for a guy who hadn't done anything. Nailing him down was 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 pretty hard. But we uh, we got a deal together. And, um, you know, his podcast is like he's got the number one sports podcast in the world. That's and great. it's been on. It's done 10 episodes, you know, so. Yeah. It's uh, it's fun and it's interesting. And, and, you know, he's a wild card, which is why people tune in. Right. You know, you don't know what's going to happen or what's right. coming out of his mouth, yeah. you know? So it's fun also too. The thing about Bob when, and credit to Bob is he's a master. He knows how to promote. It's funny. He's like a, he's a marketing guy too. So right. he'll look at an episode and go, I know how to market this episode. Sure. And that's, but, but I think also you can't deny your involvement in your ability to get great. Oh no, I did. Everything. Come on. No. I'm in, in, <laughs> no, no, but like in other words, I, I'm a big fan of Bob. I love him. I think he's right. a great guy and I'm, and I would help him any way he right. ever needed help. Cause I, I, I think I'm on, I'm on his team. Um, but you are instrumental in also bringing guests on. Well, I got you. Exactly. I got you. And, and, and by the way, I'm not just saying that cause I'm here, but that was a big get for us. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, because it's Bob's audience. They want to hear about, sure. you know, people, a, their Bob is true. It's Bob's big second chance. He's about the second chance thing. Like, I love the second chance. Let's talk about why you needed the second chance. Like, that's this whole thing. And so the, to listen to the two of you guys, I was just like sitting in the booth with my hand. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this company's going to be over before it even starts. <laughs> and then it's shot to the top, man. People <laughs> love that episode. The funniest thing was, is like the, the question, the magic question, what's the most money I ever spent on a hooker? Right. And, yeah. and like I said, only a true degenerate really would, knows that, the would, and, and would want to really, and right, and another degenerate that would want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> but you know? what was it, casino chips included? Yeah, but that's, and also the best answer <laughs> ever, because which is true. And by the way, not, I'm talking about casino chips. Like that's the problem with, I have with gambling. It's Why I don't real. like gambling, because it doesn't feel real right. to me. If I had $5,000 in $100 you, bills in my pocket, but all of a sudden you have like a bunch of chips, <laughs> right. and you're like, all right, it's just one one chip, right? But it's not one chip, you know? So it's funny that you said that. What's your, um, so what's your plans now with the podcast company? You just get, you still feeling your way through? You no, still I mean, I'm, we're We're building, you know, we're building, building the slate, but I want to eventually move into original content. You know, this might be a couple of years down the road, but eventually I want to be, I want to do original television content. You know, I want to do, cause now you can stream, like if you can, I mean, it's it, crazy, right? It re it really is a an own artist, YouTube it's an show artist a market, second, right? it's an what? artist market out there to be able to go out and do whatever the fuck you want, really. It's almost like you can prove out stuff online for totally. very little cost than if it actually hits, then you can, right? That's the other thing too, about like the podcast and, and like, you know, like, Wolf, okay, for Wolf of Wall Street, for example, like, so Terry Winter gets paid all that money. He not, he happened to knock that one out of the park. And like you said, the first draft was ready to go. Very rare, right? But a lot of times people spend millions of dollars on scripts and they just don't get there. Yeah. Right. So podcast is a good way to develop IP, see what your audience is. Right. There's a lot of hidden, it's not always necessarily just people sure. yelling into a microphone. There's yeah. other plays with development of intellectual properties yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. What do you think the, um, in terms of Hollywood right now, do you, do you, do you see that you think it's going to go towards like this? Is this there's two schools of thought, or two two types of shows? It's like release it all at once and binge it versus the weekly series. What do you, what do you which one do you prefer? I prefer to binge it at once, and then after I binge it, I wish I didn't. Right? right. Does that make sense? So sure, it's like yeah. so if you if you get you pop up and there's like uh, Narcos season two and it's there. You're like, holy fuck, it's the whole season right. is there. What do I, I do? Cancel everything. Right. <laughs> right? And then you sit and you watch, you rip through it, and in two days, you rip through it, and you're like, wow, I kind of wish I could go back and, and see that again for the first time. Yeah. So me personally, I prefer the binge, but I think now they're even starting to do a little bit somewhere in the middle. Exactly. So Apple, two the first, hours. exactly. That was, they did the first three episodes of release or the first two, right? I and think, then I think that's, I think that's a very fair compromise. That way you can get your fair. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to be a lunatic and yeah. watch four hours of TV. Yeah. You know, go for it. What do you think about, um, about HBO in terms of HBO, right? I'm um, do you, do you watch a bunch of their shows? Like, do you watch the Watchmen? You know, I, uh, I, I've given, I'm one of those people like it's really just got to grab me early and I can't and, fucking figure it and out. Sometimes people will tell me like, "Yo, you got to hang on," and then I hang on. I'm like, oh, okay, so it really is. You know, look, HBO is HBO. They're 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 on another level, 
Right. You know what I mean, I mean, Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? I mean come on. You see, what do you think that is? The what? What do you think it is about HBO? That's your series. What? Like, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, but is? I think I think it's like it, your your. I think it's your dream date, right? So you get your script and you're like, wow, I love this show. And the first words that are going to come out of your mouth are going to be HBO, right? And that doesn't mean there's not a million other homes. I mean, Showtime is fantastic. Netflix, fuck, I mean, The Irishman, <laughs> Scorsese's next movie I know. is on Net is a Netflix movie. Crazy, That's right? That's incomprehensible. But on Thursday night, after I eat my turkey, guess what I'm doing? Whole family getting on that couch and we're going to watch the fucking Irishman. I'm like, people are like, have you seen it yet? I'm like, no, I'm waiting till Thanksgiving, you know? But to be able to, to, to you know, uh, yeah, this is, there's, there's a lot of high end places, but somehow, some way, HBO is like always the first words that slip out of people's mouth, you know? Yeah. It's funny, Netflix is up it's on get, its, it's way. It's getting there, right? Well, they're very, they're very artist friendly. Netflix. Netflix is. Yeah. yeah. Netflix is like, look, you know, here, go do your thing. And they, they put the trust in the creatives. And, uh, you know, when it hits, it hits. It's smart. All right. Let's hear about you must have a couple of really just insane crazy Hollywood stories from your time during Entourage. Come on, give me, give me the, let's see, here's what we, do. we have to end the formal part of the podcast okay. right now. Right. Okay, we're now going to move on to the audio portion. Guys, share this with your friends. This is fucking awesome. I'm a huge fan of Kevin. It's been great. Now we're going to audio, so you can find it on Spotify, iTunes, wherever else. Now we're going to get into the good <laughs> stuff. Well, like it, it's true when you put a when you put a face and a, a, you know it's like he, he's an, he's a name he's a guest that didn't show yeah, up yeah. and then he's sitting there yeah, 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 yeah. and then you see a person that has a wife and a kid and I was just like guilt like rushing it. through my body. 